Easy there, Steve. Well, hey, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to the uh, Echoey office. It's still pretty bare. I need to build a workbench and get some stuff in here to get rid of the echo. Anyway, not the point of this video. Uh, we're going to do an update on the tank. We're going to see how the 20 bass is doing and the red breast and the bluegill and sadly we lost our big bluegill bob. Uh, I just came in here one day and he was stuck to the intake. I don't know, he, he wasn't showing any signs of being sick, he wasn't being bullied by the other fish. So I really don't know what happened to him. So now we're down to three fish, but everybody else is doing great. Uh, it's been a month now since I added the swanee bass and the uh, red breast to the tank. Which uh, if you don't know, the swanee bass is named Steve, the red breast is named Big Red. And small bluegill we got left is Holly. So that's all three of their names. But like I said, it's been a month and they've gotten used to me being around the tank and now they're starting to eat. I came in one day and all the minnows were gone out of the tank. And then I went out and bought some worms and made a small worm bed, which I'm going to show you guys here in a little bit. And now I've got to still even eat worms out of my hand. So now that they're feeding, I didn't want to really show you guys and do a boring video of them just kind of sulking on the bottom or letting worms fall by their face and them not doing anything. So they're feeding now, they're eating. That way you can get an update how good and healthy they're looking. And I'm going to also show you my little worm bed in case you also have some native fish how to have a uh, ready source of food on hand that just keeps producing for you so you don't have to go out and buy any more. Uh, but I stopped by my local big store just to kind of add to it. I got two cups of uh, red wigglers here and got another bag of a dozen minnows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these in the tank so they can uh, get acclimated that way I can just dump them straight into the net. You never want to add your nasty fish water to your good clean aquarium water. So once they get acclimated to the temperature, you want to take your minnows and dump them in a net, and then take the net and dump them into your tank. So I'm kind of curious to see, now that the bass is not so shy anymore, if he's going to go up and try to attack the minnows through the bag while they're you know, getting acclimated to the water temperature. So we're going to move the camera around to the corner of the tank and see what they do. All right, they've gotten pretty accustomed when this lid goes up. And it was feeding time, and you see they're all coming down here, so that's a good sign. I'm getting curious to see what is going on. Ooh, bass is he's looking. Oh, there he goes. He made a charge for him. <laughs> I don't know what what is he doing? It's almost like he's using the bag for cover. Oh there he goes, he just hit the bag. Easy there, Steve. Yeah, he did exactly what I thought. <laughs> That's awesome. Boy, those uh, minnows are going to be hating life for a little bit. Doesn't know quite how to get to him. Hope he doesn't knock my bag loose. Alright, so I'm gonna let those sit in there and uh, acclimate for about 10 minutes. And while they're doing that, I'll show you the worm bed setup I got and let uh, Steven work up an appetite trying to eat those guys through the bag. Alright, so all I got here is just a 15 quart plastic box like you get from. Walmart or the dollar store or Lowe's or anywhere like that. And I just got some organic potting soil. I filled it up with that and you can just take some newspaper and put it over the top. And there's two things. One, it gives them kind of a place to get out of the light and they'll eat it. That's the second thing. You see there's holes in it. And I just folded it back and a bunch of them took off. But like I was saying, we're going to add some more worms to it. It's just organic potting soil. Make sure you get it organic. You don't want any kind of chemicals. Like I said, there's a worm eating the newspaper right there. And they'll just live in here. And if you've got any old vegetable table scraps, you can put vegetable table scraps in here. Uh, a lot of guys use cricket food. They'll eat that too. 
you know, get any scraps like from out in the garden or the lawn, you can just mince that up and put that in here too. And that way you got a on hand supply of either fishing bait or also uh, like what I'm using it for to feed my pets, be it bass or lizards or toads or frogs, bluegills, whatever. And they'll get in here and these are pretty mature worms. And they'll spawn and they'll have little cocoons, they're like little yellow looking eggs. They're real small. And that's what they'll lay in here. And you can see they're going straight to it. And I keep this box underneath the aquarium inside the aquarium stand. That way it's right here and it's in the dark. So they're not exposed to light. That way they're happy and spawning and making more worms. You can just dump them on in there and spread them around. We're going to end up grabbing some of these here but later to feed the fish with. That's pretty good. A bunch of worms. Uh, to start one of these off, like I said, just go to your local bait store or I know even Walmart sells live bait and get you about three of these tubs. That's a good start and you will, if you don't use them for uh, food automatically, you'll double your worm population in one month. I've been going against that rule and I've been using them for food, hence why I had to add a little bit more in here. So if I overdo it, maybe I won't go through as much. And then, uh, like I was saying, you just take you some old newspaper, put it on the top, get them something to eat, something to get up underneath, get an old, get a water bottle, and just spray it down about oh every two days or so, or twice a week or something, just to keep the soil wet. They they don't do very well in dry ground, and they should do pretty well for you. I'm actually going to order some of that cricket food from Amazon. If you wonder what I'm talking about, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below. Oh yeah, also uh, on the lid, be sure to put you a couple of vent holes in here. That way they're getting air and they can breathe. But they won't escape. And if you're thinking I don't need a lid, uh, yes you do. Because <laughs> I've found them all on the side of this thing when I've gone to open it trying to crawl out so make sure you got a lid and you got one that locks. Alright, I got all my minnows in a water bottle here of the tank water and we're going to dump them in there instead of dumping them all in at one time. That way uh, we get a little bit of a show when they go to eat the minnows. So let's do what we're going to do. Alright, see he's alright. Steve is chomping in a bit. Get the lights off to take the glare. What happens? There's one. You're going at it. You're looking at it. I have to tempt you more worms. There he goes. He just grabbed one. Of course, he's over there in his corner, but he can't hardly see him. Let's see if I can get any tidbits from my hand. 
Another bread bread squill. Ooh. Really red breast got one. Bluegill, she's a little shy. She is not as aggressive. There she goes. Oh, get it. Bats try to steal it from her. There he goes. Got it that time. That's what I wanted. I wanted the red breast to be able to get one. Get it. There you go. Spin around on it. You got it. Sorry, I couldn't see it. Let me pull it out away from him a little bit more. He's a, normally a little hog. He'll eat all the worms before anybody else can. There's one. I had to hunt down my worms. Let's see who runs over against this. Big red. Alright, well we still got plenty of minnows left. Everybody's got something to eat. So we're good. You guys, that's it. We're going to wrap it up for this little feeding slash uh, fish tank update video. If you enjoy videos like this, let me know down in the comments below. And also, uh, I have something to ask of you to do for me. So since we lost a big bluegill, I'm asking you a favor. Go to the Dismore Outdoor YouTube channel and go to the community link. There I'm going to leave a poll and ask you all, should we leave the fish tank at the Three Amigos or should we add another fish to the fish tank to replace uh, Bob the Bluegill. So go over there and vote for me, and I'm gonna do, you know, based on whatever y'all's votes are gonna be. If y'all tell me to add another fish to the fish tank, awesome. I'll go out there and get another fish to put in the fish tank, and I'll submit another poll on what fish you wanna see in the fish tank. So if you got any suggestions, go to Dismore Outdoor YouTube channel, go over to the community tab, Look for that poll and vote and leave down in the comments some ideas for fish in the fish tank. Now keep in mind, I'm trying to keep this uh, a native Florida tank. So don't get crazy and say arowanas or walleyes or something that's nowhere near around here. So like I said, I'm trying to keep this a North, uh, a North Florida native tank. And if you have any ideas for the design of the tank, like if you want to see me add something else in here that you would think We'll spruce this thing up and make it look a little bit better with the eel grass and the rocks and everything. Uh, leave that down in the comment below. So just let me know. You, let me know what you like the video. If you want me to keep doing feeding videos like this with uh, Steve the Swanee Bass and Big Red and Holly the Bluegill, you know, let me know. And uh, definitely appreciate y'all for watching. Sorry, I'm saying uh. If you took a shot every time I said uh in the video, you'd probably be pretty messed up right now. So that might be the next Dinsmore Outdoor drinking game. So look forward for that. Anyway, I got a bass boat getting ready. We're going to go out to Robin. Another tournament coming up out there. The, the season, the tournament season starts to kick back off. So hopefully I can catch up some of Steve's big cousins out there in Robin. So thank you for watching Dismore Outdoors. I'm Joe. You remember, we do more in Dismore. Y'all take care. Dismore Outdoors is proudly sponsored by Bruiser Baits, fish the best. Vexen Rods, strike first with Vexen. And Real Gear, make fishing your style.